All right, guys, so now that we have Xcode opened up, we're going to want to make a single view app. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call this one Timer Demo and create it. And, uh, you know, just save it wherever you want. Okay. And let's just wait for that to load. So first, open up the main.storyboard. And let's make this full screen here. So here's our view controller. Um, we're going to need some buttons. We're going to actually need a lot of them. But first, let's make sure it's all nice and organized. So let's get a vertical stack view in here. And what we're going to do is just plop it right near the bottom. And let's just give it some simple constraints, um, some left, right, and bottom ones. So 40, 40, and 40. Okay. And let's give it a spacing of 20 so that everything in there can be evenly spaced. So, okay. So now we're going to need some buttons. And we're going to need a couple of them. So here we go. First one's going to be um, the start button. Okay, and then we're going to need, oh, it didn't go in there. Okay, then we're going to need a pause button, so pause, and a reset button. Okay, reset. Um, and then we're going to also add a plus five seconds and a minus five seconds. So we're going to do plus five here, and then one more button going to do a minus five right underneath it okay so that should be most of what we need however we do need to display the time so we're going to need a label and for this label we're just going to pop it there we're going to make it size let's say let's let's do 50 that's about a good number and let's center the text and let's just set it at default value of a minute and make sure it's in the middle still. And just to be sure, let's put some constraints on it. We're gonna do it horizontally in the center. And make sure, I don't know, it has a height of, yeah, 60, that works. Okay. And let's just, just to make sure that it's not broken, okay. All right, so now that we have all our stuff on a screen here that we need, um, we're gonna have to connect it to the class. And if you hold Option on a Mac and then you click um, the view controller you want to go to, you can actually open up another window, which is pretty nice. And then you can, you know, let's just fix some spacing here real quick. Get rid of some of these comments, the default stuff that comes with Xcode. Um, and yeah, there we go. So first we're going to need to connect this timer label. And of course, we're just going to call it timer label. We're going to need a start button. And I always like to connect all my buttons as outlets first, just in case down the road I decide to design them or, you know, you need to change the text or whatever it is. Um, it's always nice to have them as both outlets and actions. So first we're gonna just do all these buttons and you can call it whatever you want or you can copy what I'm doing. Um, I like this naming convention because it's really easy to know what it is that you're talking about. So now that we have all outlets, we're going to also need actions. So we're going to do start button for this action. And like I said earlier, it's nice to um, name everything consistently. And with that being said, I'm going to be naming the um, start button and the start button action, um, the outlet and the action, the same thing. Um, it's pretty easy to tell with the IntelliSense which one you need to specify. Um, and it just keeps it consistent. So. Let's just name everything the same thing. That way there's no confusion. All right. So now that we have all those, let's just fix the spacing here on these as well. That way everything's nice and neat. Okay, so now that we have all the labels, buttons, and stuff that we need on the screen, we're gonna need some variables. So right up here, we're gonna need a timer variable. I'm gonna just call that timer. And we can initialize the timer class there. And we're gonna need a seconds variable. And we can just um, call that, we'll just start it at 60. And the reason it need to be vars and not let constants is because you're gonna be changing this throughout the whole process of running the app. So it's better to just initialize the var. And you know, with apps or these situations, you can always change it back to let later. So we're gonna first, uh, with the start button, what I like to do is 
make sure that it's already invalidating anything that could be going. Um, so make sure there aren't any other timers running. And actually, let's close this screen so we have a little bit more room. And the reason I do this is because um, you could either hide the start button once the timer begins, or you can just do it like this so that if they click start and they want to click start again, um, it won't start two timers and confuse everything. So this way, it makes sure that there's always one timer running. And then we're going to actually have to go through and create the timer. And you're going to do that. You're going to call our timer variable from earlier and then call timer equals timer dot. And then it's going to be a scheduled timer. And we're going to need stuff like the time interval, targets, selector, user info. So this is the one we want. Um, so the time interval is going to be one. Target is self. Selector, this is where we're going to actually reference an Objective C class that controls what the timer does. Now we haven't written that yet, but I kind of know what I want to name it already. So I'm just going to call it, um, we need to do it like this. So hashtag selector and get your parentheses. Then you're going to call view controller, which is the class we're using, and then dot timer class. And like I said, we haven't written it yet, but that way it will reference that. And then the user info is going to be nil and repeats is true. Okay, so now that, oh, there's an error. Yep, so it's just telling us that we do not have that class yet. So you need to do at Objective-C function and then just call it timer class. And it's a void function, so there's no parameters, anything that needs to be passed in. So down here, we're gonna wanna do seconds minus equals one because every second that the timer's running, it's subtracting a second from our seconds variable. And then we're going to want to update the text. So timelamel.text equals string. We're going to need to wrap this into as a string. And it's just going to be seconds. And then in the case that the seconds hit zero, so your timer is done, you need to stop the timer. And we're going to do timer.invalidate to do that. Okay, so now that timer class is done, we've created our timer with a start button. Now we need to go to minus seconds and just make sure that we're subtracting it. So seconds equals seconds minus five for every click. And we're gonna wanna update the label. So timer label.txt equals the same thing as before, string and seconds. And then what I like to do is just copy this Put this up here by this one and all you got to do is click plus five so it does the exact same thing so the pause button is really simple it's literally just invalidating the current timer and that's it just need to make sure that that is invalidated and then for the reset button you're going to want to invalidate the timer to stop the current timer because they can click it when it's paused, when it's ran out, or um, you know when it's actually running. They can just decide to click reset and it has to reset. So uh, you want to invalidate the current timer, reset the seconds to 60, and then make sure to update the label to reflect that. Okay, so looks like we have most of what we need i don't think that there's much else that we can do so you know what let's just go ahead and run it and see what we got and we're gonna go and, and try as an iphone 8. okay so we have the timer up and running here and it looks like the uh label drifted up to the top of the screen because we didn't add a constraint for that you know we can focus on that later however let's just test it so if we click start we'll notice it starts and pause Okay, and then start again. So that's great because um, you don't need another variable to keep track of that. Seconds will just remain the same, and validates the current timer, and then it uh, starts a new one with the current seconds. So we know start and pause works, so plus five, okay, minus five. And just click a couple times just to make sure. And you can actually add or subtract seconds as you're running it, which is pretty neat. So, you know, I can just add five or I can even rush it down to zero by clicking minus five and then we click pause and then click reset 
and we're back to 60. So if you guys want, um, you can just call it there. Or um, if you want to stick around for the rest of the video, I will just quickly fix this constraint here just to make sure that we have what we want. So let's just make sure it stays eh, maybe like 60 from the top. And we can add some styling to this button. Um, you know, maybe like you can add a background color or whatever you want. Um, change the text color to like a green, doesn't matter. But as you guys know, you can design this however you want. You can change the background to red, whatever your heart desires. You can do it in Xcode. And there you have it. We have completely written a custom timer app from scratch. Um, you can integrate this to another app or um, you can even just use this on a daily basis as it is right now. But if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, comment down below any suggestions for new videos I should do and um, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.